Good morning. Thank you. Good to be back. Great to have you again. There's a levy in Jefferson County that folks will be voting about. Tell us about the levy. There is a levy folks will be voting about, and I will say, Matt, I don't know if you've noticed uh, early voting in Jefferson County, but I've seen some lines, and it's looking pretty good there. I have the numbers, actually. Oh, excellent. 925 people early voted yesterday, and Jefferson County only has one location, which was downtown. Right. There was a, a long line all day long. Uh, it was pretty incredible. And, <coughs> excuse me, according to um, the information I have, the first day early voting for 2020 was 431. So wow. twice as much. Twice yeah. as much, Plus. yes. And I haven't seen the line this morning, obviously, but uh, it, there's there's energy. Mm -hmm. Good. That's excellent. So uh, the school system is running a school excess levy, mm -hmm. and that allows school districts in West Virginia to uh, raise funds that stay 100% locally within the county uh, to support learning. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, for us, um, I've brought in, brought a few notes, as you can see. Okay. Do you have the wording um, of the levy? I do George? not have the wording of the levy this morning. I can give you facts about the levy. Yeah, please do. Uh, I haven't seen exactly the wording on the ballot, uh, so I apologize if we can certainly get that to you, but I don't it's have okay. that this morning. So the levy accounts for about 20%, well, 20 percent of the budget for Jefferson County. Um, in any school system, 83 well and in ours in particular 83.3 percent accounts for salaries so in supporting learning uh, this helps with salaries of staff uh, for instance with service personnel with an average of 11 years of experience it's going to give them a boost of a little over five thousand uh, dollars annually uh, for professional first personnel if you look at an average of 15 years experience, they'll get about 8,108 annually. Mm -hmm. uh, but not only that, it supports the arts. Uh, for example, we are able to offer library, music, PE, those kinds of things uh, to students. And that just doesn't come out of the state aid formula. You know, you can have classroom teachers, but supporting the arts is a little bit different. Sure. For example, in high school, we offer 63 art classes, art, you know, classes in the arts. Um, I get a lot of positive feedback from... You have 63 from, classes in the arts? Yeah, in high schools. That's amazing. And uh, without a levy, you'd have about 11. Mm -hmm. So it would really limit the choice that, by arts, that students you mean could have. music as well as... Dance. You could have... Yeah, you could okay. go in into, into arts, into graphics, like all Graphic these arts, yeah. other uh, areas where you're not just offering a general art course. Mm -hmm. You're letting someone expand their mind and take a look before they get out of high school to say I'm interested in photography and you know what I want to go do that so um, I feel like those things are very exciting and, and great learning opportunities uh, not only that the levy supports the library uh, three public libraries that we have uh, in Jefferson County thirty thousand dollars a year for the length of the levy which is five years it supports the extension service and 4-H uh, forty thousand dollars annually and it also supports parks and rec forty thousand dollars annually and we currently have an exciting project uh, with parks and rec actually on uh, one of our properties where we're building the new shepherdstown elementary uh, we're in the process of providing about 38 acres to them so that they can build a park Mm -hmm. uh, it will be a sensory park which is pretty cool since there's not one in the area what does that mean so sensory would provide opportunities for autistic students, for example, to be able to immerse themselves in an experience that wasn't intimidating. Say you wanted to see something spin or you wanted a quiet place to kind of crawl in and sit. or It provides that kind of things in the park. So mm -hmm. it's not just your normal slides, your swings, and that kind of thing. Uh, it provides more dimension and I'm, I'm sure Jennifer Myers would be happy to talk to you about you know what she would plan for the specific space but we're excited about that partnership and about the levy including those kinds of uh, groups mm -hmm. in our uh, in our county because I think all of it's important. I pass that uh, school construction site on my drive home frequently. How is uh, the uh, progress coming along? Is it on schedule? Yes, it is. Uh, in Shepherdstown, um, it, it's on schedule. Um, I hope that they're completed uh, before the next school year. We'll see what the winter brings. 
Uh, one never knows what the winter will bring and how it will slow down. But we're we're excited about the project. Um, Ranson is completed, mm-hmm. and it looks beautiful, and it will be ready for students in January. What was the final decision on the closing of the one school? Was it North Jefferson? Correct, yes. No decision's been made yet. I think that decision will be made in, in November. So I heard you had a pretty good turnout for the public input on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Lots of public. Uh, we encourage public to come and and have their voices be heard, and and we and the board heard them. They appreciated the feedback, uh, so there was good turnout on that. What is the overall Jefferson school budget, Jefferson County school Ooh, budget? I want to say I'm not the CFO, but I'll guess around 120 million. Okay, and this provides the, the levy provides about 20 percent of that. About 20 percent of that. You were saying about that. It has has the what year was the levy instituted? Do you know? And I didn't prepare you with that question in advance. So if I'm putting you on the spot, just say I don't know. I don't so. know, but I do know the voters of Jefferson County have approved a, le- a levy for 78 years. Okay, so I mean, there's a long history. It's a yeah, long years. history. I, I, I was looking at the website, the jcswv.org, which has a lot of information. It does. And so this – levy also contemplates four new resource officers it does thank you for bringing that up that's Um, the one that caught my right it it catches my eye too because there are some safety things uh for students i know there's student textbook adoption things there's one-to-one devices for students that it will support materials pd targeted pd for teachers and it will support four resource officers for the middle schools so we currently have two we have two one one at each high school right and they're stretched pretty thin you know when you get in periods of threats or whatever they can be stretched pretty thin to be pulled to 16 different schools so well, can, having four can you in the middle describe school what exciting. a resource officer is what we're talking about sure so a school resource officer is actually a police officer we have uh, a certified police officer yes we have one from the uh, sheriff's department uh, lieutenant ben williams and uh uh, Corporal DeSarno, and he's from the Charlestown Police Department. So they're actually police officers that are in uniform that uh, come into the schools. But it's not just having a police officer in school. When when I say resource, they're truly a resource. These guys are amazing at building relationships with students, um, making contact with families, and just keeping kids on the right path. So they're a great addition to the school. I know Ben does a lot of education. He helps us lead up our, our safety. So he's he's a good go-to for uh, just keeping the school safe. So I think expansion of that program is a wonderful win uh, should the levy well, pass. Well, it's, it's, if something bad happens, you already have a police officer they're there. They're right there. And I, I guess another point is uh, during the summers when school's not in, these officers – can still be police officers and that's, tend, that's tend to other duties. That is correct. So this kind of helps those. So would this expand it from two to four or provide four additional? Four additional, so it would be six total. So you could have them uh, better distributed among You'd have an armed police, police officer schools. who also wears the hat of, mm-hmm. of a mentor – um, mm-hmm. And as yep. a, one of my neighbors was a school resource. Oh, they're officer. fantastic! They're uh, absolutely, fact, it would be nice to have one in every school. Yeah. So, how much larger? <clears throat> excuse me. How much larger is this levy from the previous levy that was passed? It's not. It's a renewal of the levy. Okay. So, what you were doing before, you would continue to do. So um, the new the, the new SROs is just a a uh, rejiggering of funds that were somewhere else. To, that's to correct. Go to the SROs. Yes. yes historically are these even a close vote historically i i can't remember the last vote i want to say i want to say 60 40 but that might have been on the bond uh in passage because we ran a bond the same time i think we ran a levy the last time but i i would say that that they pass at a pretty good margin i would think so given given the 20 percent of the school budget they're there was there's been others across the state that have not passed. Well, Morgan County uh, closer yeah, to home. Yeah, but that was tied to some library thing, wasn't it? it were parks. But but then then it becomes okay if the levy's gone and you know voters can make their choice, but what services will have to be cut to make up for that deficit? 
Well, we would have to cut many programs, as I indicated at the beginning, like there wouldn't be as many arts program, which means uh, cut in personnel, both you know, both uh, teaching personnel and you can't uh, reduce central somebody's office salary, personnel. Can you? No, you have to get rid of a position. Correct. It would be it would be getting rid of positions, and that would have to be looked at, um, and getting rid of some resources as well. You know, how can we afford to do one to one devices anymore? It would be a total rebudget. How are we going to take 20% out of the budget? And that would include both, um, you know, services, uh, what we deliver to students, and personnel. <coughs> it would just be a, a smattering of that. And this is not about building schools, right? This no. This is a, a different budget. Bond, think of bonds as buildings. Right. So bonds, bu bonds build, and the levy supports learning. So the levy is really about the kids it's about bringing services it's to about the kids. bringing services to the kids uh, for instance the other day jefferson high and this is a, a program kathy justice has got a therapeutic support dog oh yeah and it's a beautiful dog oh comet is beautiful and the program is wonderful i've never seen high school students so endearing they all melted when comet came in the room right so but along with that program you get a starter fund but it's also supporting comet you know how do we do the vet bills how do you do everything has a cost associated and luckily with comet we have a vet who donated in kind in jefferson county which is amazing the partnership but you look at all that kind of stuff and you want to be able to provide all the services you can to students because students to me and and to everyone I work with in Jefferson County that's why we're there that's why we do what we do and it's a pleasure to do it and we want them to have the best we really do well and the other aspect of the levy you touched on earlier Joyce is the salary enhancement it provides to the teachers if you look at the you think you know what teachers make, but if you take out the additional salary that these teachers get because of these levies and you go with the West Virginia base, it's extraordinarily low. And when you're on the border of Loudoun County, Virginia, right. where right. the salaries are so extraordinarily high in comparison, or in Berkeley County to Washington County, Maryland, and uh, Frederick County uh, as well, you're, you're talking about uh, trying to compete with uh, salaries that you just can't. Uh, otherwise, in, in the true West Virginia-based teacher salaries, so these uh, levies help to enhance those salaries and at least keep this area slightly competitive. Because otherwise, you can hop across the border in Loudoun County and make a lot more money. I would agree 100%. There was a point in time I was recruited into Loudoun County, and uh, I chose not to go. I've always been dedicated. This is my 35th year to West Virginia children. Mm -hmm. I will complete my career dedicated to West Virginia children and wanting to work with them. But, but nobody it would is have very you attractive. Gone. Correct. It's very attractive for, for people to say, I'm, I'm going to go do that because it is more money. And I, I've had colleagues, I've known people that have done it, and I, I don't blame them, but I certainly want to um, take the great minds we have in, in West Virginia and anyone else who wants to join us out in or outside of West Virginia and keep them here and keep them teaching our kids. How is a levy different than a tax? I mean, fundamentally, it's it, it's got a different name, but is it structurally something different? It's, vol it's voluntary. You have to vote it in and vote to renew it, whereas if the income tax is established back in 1913 you really don't have any choice about that yeah, it's, okay you're not right. voting on that all right 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 it is a choice and how is it assessed is it a percentage of something what's the per uh per capita what is the amount that people are voting to spend you know what that's a good down? that's a good question i well let me give you an example with homes because this okay. is the example i have so if your home costs about four hundred thousand dollars then annually you would pay one thousand ninety eight dollars so i have a chart if you have a hundred thousand home let me look here so if your home is a hundred thousand um, dollars and it's assessed value sixty thousand dollars you'd pay two hundred seventy five dollars a year so there's an a breakdown according to the property you own and how much you would pay based on your property's value so what is the counter? Because, you know, the people out there are going to say, well, I don't have a kid in school here or I send my kids to private schools. Why should I pay for the, for the levy? Exactly. And that's a very good and compelling argument. I'll give you one that's that's close to me because um, 
you know, we all get a little age on us, and I don't have any kids anymore left in school. But I'll tell you one thing, as I get old and as I work and navigate the community, I certainly want well-educated uh, people who are bright, who have good customer service, who can perhaps take care of me in a nursing home one day. So I want them to come out of school with all the skills they can have and being be bright, shiny, happy people. So you have to weigh that against what you feel is right when, when you go to the voting box, and that is a choice. Well, and you get this money back in other ways as well. Joyce, you pointed out that you need an educated community in order for the community to function. If your schools are good, then the values of the homes that are in those districts are good and continue to increase. Uh, nobody buys a home in a bad school district. Correct. And when you're a, a young family and you're looking for a place to move, you want to, the first question every real estate agent gets asked is, how are the schools in this community? That is accurate. Right? Well, and I think everything follows from a good education. We've flogged education on the show a lot. And if you don't have a good education system, you're not going to attract good companies and you're not going to attract good employees to go to those it, companies. It, so it, it, that's right. the it's answer. The <laughs> As someone who has no kids in, in the school system, right. the reason you want to have a good system is exactly that, is, right. is you, you want to draw people who value education into your community. Exactly. And you want to attract and retain good teachers as well because that's at the heart of everything we do. And our teachers do a fabulous job. How long is this levy renewal for? Five Trust? years. Five years. Are there other levies that will come up between now and then that also get renewed? No. This is the only levy you need to vote for for the next five years in Jefferson County? Accurate. Okay, very good. And then uh, in regards to the levy itself, are there any other items that are accounted for in the levy we didn't cover? You know, I don't think so. I think we hit just about everything with the community uh, we talked about technology, professional development uh, textbooks. Matt brought in the resource officers. Um, it covers things like nurses, though, too. Mm -hmm. You don't think about the nurses that are needed in schools today, but we have a number of children with health issues, and I'm proud to say that we have a nurse in every school, and they're very much needed. They're not just a Band-Aid center. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them are helping our diabetics and, and, and that kind of thing. So certainly we want to keep our nurses around for a long, long time. But I think we've touched on everything that the levy covers. Yes. I can't tell you how huge of an impact having four more resource officers especially if they're half as good as the ones we have now. I know. They're fantastic. Yes. So having four more of those in the schools, I mean, you, you're really getting to – you can head off a lot of the problems. You can correct behavior. They're touch points. You they, can. You can, um, you can divert – they can divert kids to um, teen court. We, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of resources and, and interdiction that can be had at that age that's meaningful. And they're, the, and they're the tip of the spear for that. So you have two high schools, two resource offices right now. What will you do with the other four? The other four will go into each of our middle schools. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we have feeder schools in elementary. So they'll be able to go into the middle schools, but also have like the feeder, maybe three elementaries that are feeder schools where they can touch the elementary schools and be there as a resource for them. But their bases will be in the middle schools. We feel like in our secondary schools, being proactive and uh, touching those students every day is, is critically important. Important. Will they be under the control of the sheriff of Jefferson County, or will these be uh, people that you're hiring under the, uh, the Jefferson County Schools banner? So when they come out of the sheriff's department, they're always a police officer at the end of the day. So it's a, a shared responsibility, but when you're talking jurisdiction, I'm not going to buck the sheriff or the chief of police. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're they're ultimately under, under the auspices of their police departments. That yes. was one of the discussions in Berkeley County in terms of additional school resource officers. Do they, do they come under the, 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 the sheriff's control, or does the school system hire these people themselves, and they're more like security guards than actual... When they're a police officer, they need to be a police officer. Right. When they're a they police officer, they need to be a police authority. officer. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, Joyce, um, I'm sure your levy will pass again comfortably. We wish you the best of luck with thank it. Thank you. And thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Anytime you need anything, please let us know. Will do. You do the same.